Now that we have seen the simple demonstration of TwinList, let's look at more complex cases and alternative designs. So here we created a little playground so you could try different things. So for example, here you could look at different uh, cases and read some of the narrative for them, or you could uh, try different versions. And here is what allows me to turn on and off the, the animation. So uh, let's look at this uh, case, which is a congestive out failure. So when I go to the demo, you start with a two column and it animates like you saw before. But as you could see, when it's a much larger uh, number of drugs, it takes longer. So some of our uh, users have told us that they would prefer to turn it off after they have learned to use the system. So if I start again and actually you know, ask not to see the, the animation, when I start to the demo, it will go directly to the final layout. Now we're going to see how we could further group the drugs if there are many drugs. So here, for example, we give you a group by diagnosis. So now uh, we could see here on the left are the list of uh, diagnosis, and you could see what is associated with each diagnosis. So the aspirin is really for the arteriosclerosis vascular disease. For constipation, we could see two drugs, the cholase and the magnesium hydrox side and then we could also see large groups like the hypertension group here uh, we have not only we could see that those two drugs are um, similar as we saw before but we could also see that the Coreg is part of the same diagnosis group so we could see also that the display is a little bit longer uh, so we could imagine that a physician might start with no grouping and then, if they need it, request a grouping by, by diagnosis or to verify at the end that they did uh, the right thing, for example. Another thing we heard is that uh, a drug can be associated with more than one diagnosis. So if we want to allow this, then you could imagine showing a display like this, where here we see some uh, the drugs listed twice. So, for example, the COSAR here is also was both prescribed for hypertension and for congestive heart failure. And we decided not to really duplicate the name itself exactly shown exactly the same way. Instead, we show a shadow of that, and so it's grayed out. So you could tell that it's not just the same drugs prescribed twice but that it's, it's linked to uh, another view of that drug. We could imagine that physicians, if they wanted to quickly switch back and forth between those different views, could use keyboard shortcut instead of using the, the menu with all the options that are all listed here. But to go faster and switch between those views, you could imagine a shortcuts such as I type N here on my keyboard, and I return to the normal view for no grouping. If I want the diagnosis grouping, I press D. If I want uh, some other grouping, like drug in, dr grouping by class, I could say C. And now all the drugs are grouped by class. And I still have my shadows for showing me that uh, some drugs belong to multiple, uh, multiple classes. Now we're going to look at completely different layouts. But first, let me repeat that our users really told us that clearly separating what are the home drugs here on the left and the hospital drugs on the right was very helpful. They really liked that. Nevertheless, sometimes you may not have the room or there might be other considerations. And so we looked at alternative designs. Let's close this. And now let's look at the same case, but with a different version called the two column with links version. So when I start this, what happens, I only have two columns for the two list, but they are automatically grouped by diagnosis. This uh, naturally brings together the drugs that are equivalent. So instead of separating the two lists by pushing them on the side here, we only reveal the equivalence by putting the by using highlighting. So for example, if I put my cursor on Coreg, 
I will I see that it's exactly the same than the other correct. If I put my my cursor on aldactone, I see the similar drug. I know it's similar because it's highlighted, but there are some yellow here, so it's telling me what's really different. Same thing with the Cosar, I could see what's what's different. And same thing for all the other drugs. So when the yellow appears, I mean it's telling you that it's not quite the same. If there is no equivalent, then it's by itself. Finally, we'll show you uh, yet another layout. With this one, we call it the three column layout. So here what we do is we still have our two columns, and but we have a third column, which is diagnosis. And when I put my cursor on one of the uh, diagnosis, it highlights, mainly by removing all the other ones, it shows me uh, what are the drugs that are associated with hypertension, etc. Diabetes, insomnia, dementia, etc. Right? And so it works the other way. I could put my cursor on a drug and see what it was associated with. So our recept is with dementia. And cimidine with GERD. And that makes it very easy to associate uh, drugs with multiple diagnoses. Let's see if I could find one. Da -da -da. Where is it? Hypertension. Cosar. Oh, here we go. Here is our Cosar again. And we could see because it's uh, there's two diagnoses highlighted in pale green on the left that it's associated, with, associated both with hypertension and congestive heart failure. To summarize, what we are doing is we are showing you the similarity of the drug only when you bring your cursor on the name of the drug. So opposed to the original twin list layout, who visually was separating the home and, and the hospital and visually telling you what was similar and different, here you have to search for it. You have to hunt for the similarity, which is more work. On the other hand, this layout would allow you to have more than two columns of drugs. You could have find the similarity between three or more columns. Uh, finally, um, what we could see, just some examples here. here. Look what happened here is that the, the similar drug is off the screen, so you have to scroll for it. So here at least we give you an, a hint. You have to, it appears at the, the bottom right. I can't point to it because my cursor is here really on the aldactone, but at least I'm, I'm alerted that I should scroll to go find the other one. Of course, if you had a bigger screen, this is less of an issue. And in fact, the five column original twin list layout is more compact. So it will put more drugs on the screen and require much less scrolling. One more thing I want to show you, and I'll use a different data set for this, a pulmonary disease data set. And what I wanted to say is that in the, until now, everything we looked at, uh, similar drugs were only in pairs, like here. You know, there is only two, then we show them side by side. But sometimes there could be more than two. So here is an example where the zestoretic is really, as you could see in the detail at the bottom, is really a compound drug. It's made of hydrochloride and lisinopril which happened to be those two drugs that were pre uh, prescribed in the hospital, but separately. So it's important to show that they are uh, equivalent. And when I select one, the other two are deselected.